Coming up in your news at five, after pounding the coasts of Mexico and Cuba, Michael now heads toward the Florida Panhandle. We'll have the latest on where and when the storm is expected to hit. I'm in coastal Wakulla County where residents have been ordered to evacuate, yet boats are still docked at the marina behind me, and many say they're riding out the storm. I'll tell you why locals say they're staying in minutes. And Franklin County is getting ready for whatever Hurricane Michael brings. The governor stopped by to share the latest updates. We'll have a live report coming up. I'm Stephen G. Winmall. Your News at 5 starts right now. Live from the WTXL studios, this is ABC 27's News at 5. Stephen G1 Mall and Valerie Mills are standing by on the coast. We'll have live reports from them in just a moment. But first, here's First Alert Chief Meteorologist Casanova Nurse with the latest on the storm. Cas. Ava, the information as of the 5 o'clock update just now coming into our systems as the intensification mode has continued with Hurricane Michael. It is now a major hurricane because it has reached peak winds of 120 miles per hour. Earlier today, there was some struggling in the overall form and the wraparound of the moisture, but we have seen that center dense overcast cloud structure built around what is becoming a more distinct eye. So that is a sign of healthy circulation throughout the system. It's over very warm waters and the upper level winds are much lighter than they were just a few days ago. So we have seen the shift towards a strengthening hurricane. That process continues in that last check. It is reaching peak winds right around the core of about 120 miles per hour. Earlier today, we did notice that north northwest shift, but over the last few hours it's been moving more to the north. So that continues at about 12 miles per hour in forward speed. Now that will continue to take it in that general direction for another few hours. I'd say probably through the early morning. Then we'll start to have the effects of that western trough moving in. So that will initiate that turn eventually to the north northeast. The overall expectations and projections have not fundamentally changed. Still looking at a potential landfall with the cone covering areas from roughly St. Andrews Bay through Apalachicola. So there is still some wiggle room as far as where the center will go. But it's very important and critical to keep in mind that a hurricane is not just one spot on the map. It is a broad system. The wind field, as far as tropical storm force goes, spreads out uh, considerably over 175 miles. The extended forecast for that system will race it off to the northeast as a post-tropical system. So overall, we have not seen a change in the warning structure. We still have hurricane warnings for many western and central Big Bend counties, many Flint River and South Georgia counties as well. Interstate 75, Suwannee Valley, tropical storm warnings. You could certainly encounter periods of time where the winds will gust above 40 miles per hour and hurricane warnings. That means we could have occasional hurricane force winds uh, at times in terms of gusts across the central western Big Bend and the tri-state region. So the center at last check roughly about 275, 250 miles from the tip of the Franklin County coast. With the onshore movement of it, I still believe there's going to be a significant storm surge risk with water levels increasing at bare minimum two feet and likely very high. The wind field does project the tropical storm force winds reaching the coast by pre-dawn hours and then advancing inland even beyond sunrise. So that's going to be a critical factor in your timing of any sort of last minute preparation or travel plans. We'll have a whole lot more information on this coming up in just a few minutes. Franklin County residents and businesses are taking Hurricane Michael seriously, and so are officials, including Florida Governor Rick Scott, who shared some updates just a few hours ago. WTXL ABC 27 Stephen G. Mall is live in East Point, and Stephen, what's the latest? Well, here in Franklin County, the governor described what could happen here as absolute devastation. He said it's likely Michael will be the most destructive storm to hit the panhandle in decades. Now, this afternoon, he was right here at the sheriff's office going over the state's plans. He says that the National Guard, state troopers, and fish and wildlife officers are ready to respond wherever they're needed. FDOT is waiving tolls on roads in the panhandle, and at least 32 shelters are open statewide, but none of them are in Franklin County. That's because officials say it's a flat coastal county that will likely get cut off from the area with flooding. That's why the governor kept talking about getting ready now before it's too late. This is your last chance to get prepared for this monstrous and deadly storm. Hurricane Michael has already taken lives in Central America. Let me be clear, Hurricane Michael is going to hit very near to where we are in Franklin County as a dangerous 
and life-threatening major hurricane. And if you don't follow the warnings from these officials, the storm could kill you. Right now in Wakulla County, all low-lying coastal areas are in mandatory evacuation zones. WTXL's Valerie Mills spent the day in Panacea. And Val, how are locals there preparing for the hurricane? Ava, many people I spoke to here in Panacea are staying here to ride out the storm despite the evacuation order. They say their homes are prepared, they have supplies, and they're ready to brace for Hurricane Michael. Regardless of whether people are staying home or leaving, this town is full of activity. From people leaving stores with full shopping carts to long lines at gas stations to people pulling boats out of the water, Panacea locals are getting themselves ready. We have evacuated the last two storms, um, and when we've returned home, there wasn't a lot of damage. There didn't seem to be a big necessity to evacuate. Um, we have two dogs, and it's just hard to evacuate. Um, I'm on the other side of 98, and so um, we're hoping that the surge will not, will not flood the yard, certainly not come into the house. Um, I'm mostly worried about my vehicles because I have no way to get them up and, up and elevated. The Wakulla County Sheriff's Office had shuttles available to take Panacea residents to Leon County shelters today. However, no one showed up. And deputies tell me they're concerned about some of these Panacea residents who are staying home to ride out Hurricane Michael. I'll have more coming up in the next half hour. Live from Panacea, Valerie Mills, WTXL, ABC 27. For the Panhandle, this is the biggest storm in decades. Um, the, it's monstrous. Uh, we're going to see uh, something this area hasn't seen in decades. Here in Florida, Governor Rick Scott was not mincing words earlier this morning during an exclusive one-on-one -on -one interview with our Jada Williams. During their conversation, Governor Scott reminded Floridians along the state's panhandle and here in the Big Bend that the time for preparation ahead of the storm is running out. Here's Jada Williams. I spoke exclusively with Florida Governor Rick Scott this morning ahead of his continuing efforts to get the state prepared for Hurricane Michael. Here's a little piece of that exclusive interview. Hurricane Michael has developed a little more quickly than other hurricanes. Has that affected the way that the team has handled hurricane preparedness? I think that it has, it has come about faster, and, but we do it the same way. We're making sure we're reaching out to our sheriffs, our mayors, our county commissions, seeing, you know, making sure they're ready, uh, asking their, everybody to make sure you have your mutual agreements for power. The, um, uh, talking to all the uh, health care facilities to make sure they're ready, they're responsible for their patients, make sure they understand uh, that my expectation is everybody's going to do their, do their jobs. Governor Scott also discussed the importance of evacuating. This is inconvenient, right? It's no fun to evacuate. Uh, think about, you know, your family or my family. It was never convenient. I know in my case, my family would have struggled financially and it would have been devastating to them financially to even have to try to find a place to live for two days. So I know that's hard on people, but Floridians want to help each other and we will help each other. You can catch my full interview with the governor on our website, that's WTXL.TV, or find it on our social media pages, that's WTXL Tallahassee. In the studio, Jada Williams, WTXL, ABC 27. As Gasden County braces itself for Hurricane Michael, it's doing everything it can to make sure those living in the area are safe by providing emergency shelter and transportation. The Board of County Commissioners has issued a mandatory evacuation for all mobile homes in Gasden County. The school board is providing transportation to county shelters for anyone who needs it. Buses run every three hours as long as the weather permits, so officials say don't wait until the last minute to evacuate going to be stops in Havana, Midway, Chattahoochee, Greensboro, and Quincy. County officials urge citizens to take precautions and stay up to date on emergency weather information by signing up to receive emergency alerts at gasdencountyfl.gov and then backslash alert Gadsden. For a full list of Gadsden County pickup locations, visit our website at wtxl.tv. Gaston County officials want people to be storm ready and have a plan as Hurricane Michael gets closer to our area. As we mentioned, they've issued a mandatory evacuation for mobile homes in Gaston County. There are three shelters open for anyone who needs a safe place during the storm. Their locations are the Gaston County High School in Quincy, 
West Gasden Middle School in Greensboro, and Havana Magnet School in Havana. They are open now. The Gadsden County High School location is equipped to handle people with special needs. Health department's there, and they are handling people on oxygen, special needs. We can handle people here that have um, problems seeing, stuff like that, but do not have any special medical needs. Gasden County does not have a pet-friendly shelter. All pets have to be taken to Chillis High School, excuse me, Chillis High School shelter. As we mentioned, you can stay up to date on emergency weather information by signing up to receive emergency alerts at GasdenCountyFL.gov backslash alert Gasden. The Western Panhandle is also preparing for the storm. Raycom News Network's Russell Jones reports from Panama City Beach. Yeah, guys, take a look. Crews are getting everything ready. You can see they're moving the lifeguard stand right there. I spoke to the mayor. He said things are going to get serious down here. He's warning folks, if you haven't gotten out, you need to do so quickly. We're not going to send emergency personnel out after the winds get 50 miles an hour. You're on your own. Panama City Beach Mayor Mike Thomas is warning folks to get out of town. He fears Hurricane Michael is going to leave a lot of damage behind. But some of the issues you just aren't going to be able to fix. It's just going to make a mess. Hurricane Michael is expected to be a Category 3 hurricane by the time it hits Panama City Beach. Officials are asking folks who stay behind to stay inside. You cannot be out on the road when this thing gets here. I've been through some of them and you don't want to be moving around. Now. now once the hurricane has left the panhandle, Mayor Mike Thomas says take your time getting back. You don't want to come back and be miserable. Uh, people worry about looting and things like that. We're not going to have that problem here. Folks are still out here enjoying the beach. You can see people walking up and down the coastline. There's even been a man out here all morning surfing. But as the mayor said, if you're still out here tomorrow and you get stuck in a tough spot, emergency crews will not help you. Reporting at Panama City Beach, Russell Jones with the Raycom News Network. Decatur and Grady counties are expected to experience wind speeds from 39 to 73 miles per hour. Those who live in mobile homes are strongly advised to evacuate because winds up to 50 miles per hour can cause serious damage. Electric crews will be working from 6.30 in the morning until 10 o'clock at night during the storm. But once winds surpass 45 miles per hour, all their services will have to stop because they have to make sure their crews are safe during the hurricane. If your home isn't secure yet, here are some helpful tips. Make sure you secure your roof, window, doors, and garage doors with temporary protection, like window shutters or plywood. Move anything in your yard inside if it, if it can become flying debris. Inventory your valuables and other items and make sure you're, you understand your insurance policy. You can check out our hurricane special, Get Prepared Now, for detailed information on how to stay safe during the storm. That 30-minute special will air right here on WTXL tomorrow at 1230, right after our midday newscast. You can also find it online anytime at WTXL.TV. And if you have pictures of hurricane weather, preparations, or even empty store shelves, share them using our hashtag. It's hashtag WTXL Tracking Michael. You can also check the hashtag for the latest weather updates. And make sure your phones are charged during the hurricane so you can download our First Alert weather app. It's available for Android and iOS. Stay up to date with all the latest hurricane information. After the break, Nikki Haley says she's resigning as ambassador to the U.N. We'll have more on why she made that decision. Hurricane Michael is still poised to cause significant adversities for even our own local counties. A landfall may not happen within our region, but it will be very close, too close for comfort. We'll nail down impacts zone by zone and more in your first alert forecast.
President Trump has another cabinet position to fill. United Nations Ambassador Nikki Haley resigned today. During a meeting at the White House, President Trump announced Haley will step aside by the end of the year. Haley says it has been an honor of a lifetime serving as President Trump's U.N. ambassador, but that it was time to leave the administration. Trump says Haley told him several months ago she wanted to take time off. He plans to name a replacement in the next two or three weeks. The structure and form of Michael has really improved in the last 12 to 24 hours, allowing gradual intensification. There are very few inhibiting factors in the eastern gulf and the atmosphere above that would really give me any kind of confidence that we would have some sort of significant weakening trend. So I'm doubtful we're going to see any sort of big drop off in the intensity. There is quite a bit of dryness on the western flank of the system, but not a lot of it has been sucked into the circulation of the system itself. If anything, any dryness has basically been washed out. We've had a good solid wraparound of the cloud bank and the moisture along with it. So it's a well-formed storm. And if you are near the coast, you're seeing some seriform clouds off in the southern sky. That's the upper tops of the northernmost fringe of the circulation of this hurricane. Roughly about 275 miles or so to the south-southwest of Apalachicola, still moving to the north with peak winds right around the center of 120 miles per hour. Still the expectation of it to move north through the early morning hours and then eventually a north-northeast turn, which would take it towards the eastern panhandle or still have to stress that the western Big Bend is still in the forecast cone of possible movement of the center of the storm. So we cannot discount that existence in this forecast track. As it makes landfall, it will still be uh, capable of producing some devastating impacts for the point of landfall. And then beyond that point, there's still going to be some considerable wind forces to deal with, especially in the Tri-State Junction and the Flint River Valley. So this is not going to be solely a coastal event. This will carry inland as far as wind forces go. And many of us, if not all of us, will have periods of time of gusty winds and rain. Because of the possibility of hurricane force gusts within a considerable chunk of our region, including many southwest Georgia counties and the western Big Bend, hurricane warnings still up. Tropical storm warnings are unchanged for the I-75 corridor. The short-range forecast, at least we've seen some of the moisture streaming in from the east. These showers that we've had today are not feeder bands from the hurricane, but we do have that channeling of east flow that's helping to bring in some moisture and some modest support in the atmosphere to allow passing showers to come through and holding temperatures in check in most cases. But uh, we are going to start to get direct impacts from the precipitation and the circulation of Michael as it moves to the north in due time. Here's a forecast map of the progression through tomorrow morning. The center likely to make a closer approach to the eastern panhandle region or perhaps even the Apalachicola vicinity by uh, late morning, early afternoon. And then once the front starts to swing in, that's the trough that will start to pick it up and move it out of our area. But it may take some time for that to occur. So tomorrow is the bullseye that we're going to have to be facing in terms of its impacts on our region. In the overnight period, probably not a whole lot of rain inland, but at the coast, the weather will start to deteriorate. We'll start getting these initial feeder bands lashing out at the coast. Some of these have the capability of causing spin-up tornadoes and water spouts. So even before dawn, some of our coastal zones will already have a severe weather impact, potentially, and then an ongoing trend of increasing winds, steadier winds, landfall of the hurricane likely west of our region. This is one version of the forecast and focus, and I will show you another one just to, just to stress the point that any little deviation off of the current projections could make a huge difference in who gets what kind of weather. And this version tends to have more of an easterly track. Now, that's not to frighten or scare, but again, it's just to show you that we are not honing in on just that one path. There could be slight shifts between now and the afternoon, which could bring some significant impacts across the area. So tomorrow, definitely warranting the first alert weather day because of severe weather expectations. But on Thursday morning, we'll still have some residual effects from the system, and it will start to clear out and give us a, a, a brighter and drier weekend. So we'll cover the east and west basics in terms of impacts coming up in the next half hour or towards the end of this half hour, but we do have some brightness in the extended forecast. We just have to get ready and be prepared for tomorrow.
After the break, Facebook announces its latest technology. And still ahead in your news at 5.30, we are still tracking Michael as it moves closer to the Florida Panhandle. We'll have the latest on its location and the storm prep taking place. Facebook is making a new push into video calls. The company is introducing two new devices called the Portal and the Portal Plus. Both feature touch screens and cameras and have Amazon's Alexa built in to let users do things like ask for the weather or make Amazon orders. Prices start at $200 and if you want one but you're watching your budget, you could always try your luck at Powerball. The Powerball jackpot is up to $282 million. That's a cash option of about $161 million. With that kind of money, you could get over $1.4 million Portal devices. Find out if you're a lucky winner Wednesday night at 11 right here on WTXL. And if for some reason that isn't enough money for you, well, the Mega Millions jackpot is now at 470 million. That's 2.3 million portal devices. What would you do with all of those? Find out if you're a winner tonight at 11 right here on WTXL. Our easternmost counties that recently had a tropical storm watch now with a warning that includes Clinch and Eccles and Hamilton and Swanee. I do think there could be times of occasional tropical storm force gusts in those eastern counties. Also a risk for tornadoes. And we'll cover the western section coming up at the top of the next half hour. All right. Well, thank you for joining us. That's it for our news at 5. Stay tuned for 530.